equations, three variables. Um, <clears throat> And um, um, you, you're, you're likely going to get errors if you if you get an error once. So if you get an, like last time I was trying, I was getting an error for the first time because I only had two equations <coughs> listed. Anyway, so it didn't work. But it, this was a system we're talking about last time. Um, that matrix that has that had two. Well, one repeated, two eigenvalues, one was repeated, and um, only one eigenvector corresponding to the repeated eigenvalue. <clears throat> so it was, the canonical form was a Jordan form. And these are, you know, these are solutions, but they won't tell you much because it's just for a particular set of initial conditions, right? So, <clears throat> you can get a little bit better uh, idea by doing the 3D plot. And here I have to choose x1 versus x2 versus x3. And again, you see this. Um, <coughs> uh, solution, but again, you don't really see where it's starting and where it's ending. I mean, you have to... Where'd it go? You have to uh, pretty much. Okay. Just, uh, I don't know what happened here. I can re, re send it here. Okay. So um, it starts. Let's see, where does it start? It starts over here and then it increases, it grows, right? And <clears throat> we said it grows, how does it grow? Well, if you look at the matrix, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, zero uh, 1, 1, 1. <clears throat> then what are the eigenvalues? Two are one, right? And one is negative one. And what do we say? What do we say? What's the picture? What's the face portrait of this picture of this uh, of this uh, Jordan conical form? Well, we drew it last time, but let me let me do it. Let me start it um, again here. So okay. So um, a was zero one zero one zero zero one one one, and we said this is canonical. Uh, the canonical form is one 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 negative one, right? That much you should. I mean, we, um, you can. Uh, this was a homework problem, actually. So, um, so the picture that corresponds to this canonical form is what? So this would be. Call this J. Okay. And what's the relation between A, uh, T, and A? It's there is an inverse. There's a, there's a linear transformation invertible or matrix T, for which T inverse A T is J, right? <clears throat> so, if you look at the Y, if you want to Y, the Y system, then we said what? We said the, in the XY, in the, well, 
in the in the horizontal plane, it's those first two coordinates, right? Act as a uh, I forgot which way, but it's probably this way. Yeah, the trays of the trajectories are like this, right, going out. Yeah, and on the third one, it's negative one, so it goes in, right? So a solution starts somewhere, and then it goes to infinity, but it approaching that plane, right? Now, what's the x picture? So it's it's really hard to plot. I mean, it's it's just have to imagine, right? <clears throat> the x picture will be pretty much impossible to uh, to figure out unless we know what t is, right? So t is going to be is going to transform. First of all, <clears throat> it's going to transform this plane, right? How does it go? Does it go from x to y or from y to x? t. x was t of y, right? So it goes this way, right? So you have a map, a, a matrix, right? <clears throat> Which we can find. By the way, how do you ask MATLAB to find it for you? <laughs> if you don't want to do the work. Well, you can't really have it all at once, but you can ask for the same eigenvalues, same command, uh, possibly T, D. Let's see if that's going to do it. <clears throat> yeah. See what 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 came out of this? When you does anybody use that command? Uh, asks for eigenvalues and eigenvectors. See, so it gives you d is the eigen uh, the basically the well it gives you the eigenvalues right, but it's not the canonical form. And the eigenvectors are on the columns of this matrix, but you can see this and that are not linearly independent. So this means this is not the canonical form, right? The canonical form has the one, meaning this has to be replaced with what? With the generalized eigenvector. And that, how do you find that? Well, you set a minus one times identity times that. <coughs> equal to this eigenvector. Right? So we don't know, I mean, you have to do the combination. But at least one of them you can see it's on it's vertical. Right? So what does this mean? Where, where is that plane that was horizontal in the y coordinates going to be transferred in the, t, in the x coordinates? Well, it's going to have at least that's going to be one vector in it, right? One direction. So that's the, it's going to be vertical, right? So in fact, if a plane has a vertical line, then it's vertical, right? So it's going to be a vertical plane, and the solutions <coughs> uh, where's the solutions? Right? So whatever the plane was initially, was the you can say that this plane attracts all solution, can right? Because you see on this direction in the y, it just goes towards that plane, right? So this plane is the attractor or something. We'll talk about that. Right? So in this case, it's going to be a plane that's a vertical plane that's going to attract it, right? And there could be some you know, twists and turns here, but there's going to be a in fact, actually we know the vertical is going to be the eigenvector, so my picture is not really right. 
But anyway, that's going to be, and then all the solutions will go towards that point. Okay? Can you see any of that from the from the from the graph? I don't think so, because it's right. But if you uh, if you um, <clears throat> let's see, if you rotate, and you can, I guess, if you run. Um, well, the problem is if you run a uh, time, bigger time, this is going to go, it's going to look like a line, right? But it's not a line. But you can see that it's kind of aligning with a, can you see it's aligning with a plane? Okay. Let's say another example where, where, um, where this picture is, is more clear. But the point, the point I'm trying to make is that it doesn't really matter. Um, that you cannot see it nicely and clear on the on the 3D picture. The important thing is that you know how the structure of that canonical form translates into the into the dynamics. Had a question? No. Okay. So let me uh, give you this other example, which is um, slightly different behavior. Um, Okay, so it is the following. It's 0, negative 1, so I'm putting a negative 1 here. x2 prime is x1 plus x3, and x3 prime is x1. I don't know how to make this smaller. I guess I'll just do this and delete because we don't need this anymore. Okay? <coughs> All right. <coughs> um, well, do you get, again, what is that you see? That's basically the question. You see something spiraling. Well, you don't know if it's in or out, but looks like the initial condition is, you know, it's very small. So you're probably starting here, right? And you're looks like you're moving in a certain direction, spiraling out, right? So how do we explain this behavior? Well, when you do the Jordan canonical form, here's what you get. Okay, you get the uh, comp you get complex conjugate roots and a real root. Okay, so the real root is looks like it's one. So that's going to be a simple eigenvalue. And the other one is I don't know zero point minus zero point one. 1, 0 0.1 and one, negative 1. Negative 1, excuse me. So remember, alpha minus beta, beta alpha. So it corresponds to what eigenvalue? Alpha plus i beta. A plus or minus, right? Okay? So, Looks like the eigenvalues are minus 0 0.1 plus or minus i. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm looking at the t, not at the a. No, a should be a little bit different. Sorry about that. That was T actually. <clears throat> T was very easy, but A is minus. I was wondering where point one came from. Um, this minus one, one negative one point one, one zero. Okay, it's the example on page one twelve. 
Okay. All right. So the picture is is, is then I was drawing is different, right? Should be. Minus point one times x one plus x three minus x one plus x two minus one point one x three. I think you have to put the all the uh, operations minus point zero one times x three. Thank you. All right, let's try this again. Okay. All right, so this looks a little bit... Well, I mean... Um, <clears throat> the point is that you can always explain this behavior by reducing the canonical form. So, what's the conclusion here? Well, because of the complex roots, what happens? In this y in the y picture, so this is the y picture again. The first two components are uh, obeying this spiraling in or spiraling out. In fact, which one is it? Alpha gives the sign of alpha gives you uh, the it's negative, so it's spiraling in, right? Because in, in magnitude is decaying. So <clears throat> in this picture it's spiraling in and you know let's not worry about orientation at this point but okay so this is going in but in the third direction which is the, z the vertical direction is going out right so it means it's it means the picture is exactly this but rotated I mean somehow it's I won't be able to rotate. Um, okay, so this is like in the Y picture. This is like looking from the bottom up. Okay, so you kind of okay, and T. What does T do? Which was what I wrote earlier. It actually. Reorients or, or changes the like you know transforms that plane so that it's you get basically the X picture, okay. And again, you can track what that plane that was initially horizontal in the Y plane in the Y uh, picture, uh, how is it shipped in the X picture, and so forth, right? But the important thing is again the behavior. So this behavior, I think, uh, they call it a spiral settle. Saddle, saddle. Why is it a spiral saddle? Well, it's, it's a spiral saddle because, well, it's a it's it's a saddle because you have two different. Behaviors. One is it's in. It's going towards the origin. On in 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 well, in two directions, and then it's going away from the origin in a third direction. Okay. So you can imagine all of this um, good goodies uh, popping up, and whatever system you have, <coughs> the system I was trying to show you earlier. That's for three by three. For four by four, bye bye. There is no more, not even plotting uh, a solution curve is possible, right? So the one I was showing you last time is this two springs, which, by the way, I put it as a homework, but I think it's a little bit different. It might be a little bit different. This is not a. Well, this look coupled too, so I think it's the same. I didn't check. Did you guys look at the homework problem? Coupled. I have a nice picture I'll show you in a second. But anyway, so this is, take a look at this. Um, you have four equations, four unknowns. Uh, I don't know, constants are nice, so 
you can write this on a, on a piece of paper. Okay. Uh, you can also define your own. So you can modify. You know, this was like a save, and then you can save this. Did I show you this? You can save the system. Well, on your computer, and say this is my system. Um, and then you can call it later, so so you don't have to every single time type in that that code. Uh, but let's say this is, and of course this is wrong. I need to. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, try to run this. And always in this OD uh, solve, which is the only one you can really use, is what is you don't have a good way of plotting all solutions. So. I mean the solution in the phase plane, in the phase portrait. So time plot is one way, but this doesn't really help you, right? And the best you can do is a is a phase plot in 3D and what you need is you need to hit change here, remember that, and then solve this. And you get a tangled curve in 3D. What is the problem with this? This is not showing the fourth variable. It's not showing the fourth variable. Right? So you don't really see the, the curve. You only see the, the trace or the, the, the projection of that into 3D. In fact, I showed you last time, I think, uh, in 2D, if you, you can, if you want to say, well, I just want to see how X, basically how the first spring uh, behaves, okay? So, w what are these, these uh, variables, X and U? Well, for the, fir <clears throat> for the first spring, so this is talking about two springs that are coupled, well, two mass, okay, I'll show you a picture in a second. X is the position and U is the velocity. Okay, so if you just want to plot the, like the first one, then you can you can choose this this X versus U, and you see the projection of that trajectory onto only this this plane of X and U. Okay, and just to show you what that looks like, I'll um, <coughs> I found a nice. <coughs> Uh, I'll link it to the to our website right now. I linked it to my other class. I'm teaching an introduction to ODE class too. So, um, and I just found this uh, coupled spring mass system. Which. Well, I kind of I went to the extreme. Let's stop it. Uh, what happened here? So, do this again. Okay, I'll just do this a little bit here. So that's how you set your initial conditions, right? So you see, because because so, if you try to plot this solution, uh, the, the 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 trajectory only for the first mass, that there would be x and u, right? Of course, here is just x. But if you were to plot x and u, you would get that picture in the x and u plane that we have. Okay, and you can see it's never really periodic. It's not necessarily coming back at all. Uh, why? Because of the influence of the other. It's like a hidden uh, influence here, right? If you don't, if you only follow this one, you don't see the whole picture. Okay? So you, you have to kind of imagine the four-dimensional face, face portrait. And that's where the canonical form comes into the picture because it tells you in that big space how the solutions behave. Okay? They behave Um, they oscillate, right? 
So the oscillate means what? Means some eigenvalues are complex, right? Um, in fact, you could almost say what? That in this case, the eigenvalues are purely imaginary, right? You see, if there is, if there would be some real part that's negative, what would happen? would damp out at least in some component, right? Or in some combination of components, right? In a certain direction. If it's the other way, if it has real part, positive real parts, then it will be blowing up, right? So we almost can say that this is, uh, has pure imaginary uh, roots, so it means it's not a hyperbolic. Remember we talked about, we said, what is a hyperbolic system? One that has hmm? just uh, we said that if it if it doesn't have um, uh, eigenvalues on the imaginary axis, so they're either with re with negative real part or with positive real part, right? So that would be this would be kind of the opposite. Every, everything is on the imaginary axis, okay? And you can. Um, convince yourself. In fact, I think that's uh, what this homework problem is asking you, to see that indeed those, well, it, it almost gives you the, the solutions in this case. Um, but you can, you can um, take that matrix, okay, you can comp you can write that matrix and, and look at the eigenvalues, convince yourself that they are they are imaginary. Okay. Uh, there is a scenario when you have a mechanical like a system like this, when what happens? You have a repeated eigenvalue with deficient eigenspace, meaning fewer eigenvectors eigen than the multiplicity of the eigenvalue, okay? So we have a Jordan block in one of the, in the canonical form, right? After transformation of the change of, of coordinates. Then what happens with the solution? It could actually go out, right? Um, it's, it's what's called a resonant case. Okay, it could actually be. It has that t uh, t factor in it, so you could actually have something something that is increasingly, you know, not exponentially increasing, but it's just increasing and uh, 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 without bound. So what would happen with with a system like this? for which the solutions, kind of the oscillations increase without bond. Well, that thing is going to break, right? The, the, if you think about a couple oscillator and you have a resonance, then, then that is going to go beyond the physical limitations, right? In fact, with bridges, that's, that's a big thing, right? Actually, with lots of things where, you know, resonances can occur, you can have... Um, Oscillations that become so large that it, it exceeds some whatever physical constraint you have in that problem. Okay, so that it, there's a, there's a break, um, there's a there's a catastrophic kind of change in that uh, system. Um, just to illustrate, what what would be a system where where such a thing would 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 occur? Sounding glass. Hmm? Sounding glass. You're the expert. Uh, but what's a, what's what's a system of differential equations that that would exhibit that? Well, as I said, there has to be a Jordan block that has no that has what that has um, uh, not enough eigen eigenvectors. So an example could be, I mean, we could do a three by three, <coughs> but let's look at four by four. Um, 
here's here's one of them. Um, let's say uh, u. Uh, I mean, x prime is u. U prime is zero. Okay. And here, I don't care. It could be could be the same. Well, I do care actually. Um, v and y minus uh, minus y minus v. Got an error. Do I have to decrease t? You know, as I said, if this happens, just do the following. Just save your thing so you don't have to retype it. Um, and um, close this. Okay, and restart it. And then open it. And yeah, let's decrease t. That's way too much. Okay, so. I mean, time plot is not. I mean, it is. It is useful if you track kind of time evolution, right? But if you want to see sort of a um, the um, well, let's do three D. So how am how am I achieving how am I achieving this resonance? Well, in this case, it's kind of a boring. I should have had something that is uh, spiraling and. So it's like um, v and minus y. Okay. Hmm? How, 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 how do I know this is a sort of a give us a resonance? You see, if I let t. Hmm? idea well that, that was too much actually see you have limitations as far as uh, what the time probably 30 was good in this case hmm. but 10 was good Okay. Well, the example is too simple to uh, to show anything interesting. But again, why is this resonant? Well, what's the what's the matrix that corresponds to this? <coughs> so if a is for instance let's let's imagine this is happening it's the Jordan canonical form is or the canonical form is has this block uh, eigenvalue zero multiplicity two but only one eigenvector and then two uh, distant eigenvalues then <clears throat> we know actually what the solution of this looks like. Okay, we know how the solution of this, uh, the first two components look like, right? X, uh, y one prime equals y two, y two prime equals zero, means y two is constant. So it means y one is k, whatever this constant is. Y one is k times t, right? So you see, in the in the in just in this plane, in the y one y two plane, uh, the solution looks like well, y two is constant, and y one is increasing without bound. Right? So in the other two directions, things could happen. Whatever whatever happens in the other two directions, you know that the solution is growing with time. So if this is coming from a mechanical system, that's a resonant situation, right? 
So resonance is when when you have uh, fewer um, no. Um, Wouldn't it be non-resonant though if resonance if the other two are actually decreasing? No, because in, in the Y1 direction it's increasing. So you really I mean you, you cannot have Again, again, if it comes from a, from a, from a mechanical system or from, from, from a physical system where you have limitations on this thing, this means after a while the, the, the physical system is going to break. I mean, the laws are going to be different. Um, of course, there is also resonance if you have some external forcing. We'll talk about this um, probably next time. How one... Uh, uh, forces a, dynam a system like this. Okay, so I won't say anything about that right now. But <coughs> the goal is still to understand this uh, solutions of this linear system. Okay. So right now I wanted to I want to uh, focus a little bit more on how the solutions of this of a system like this will look like or it can be computed so given this how uh, to well and let's have an initial condition x of 0 is x0 how to compute x of t okay well Practically, we've already we already know this. Okay, with one with only one ingredient that we still need to to, uh, to say. Well, so first step one is um, reduce a to canonical form. Okay, and compute t such that t inverse a t is j. Okay. Can I can I um, can we assume that this is a step we can all perform? I mean, not maybe not in all details because um, for for huge size systems, if it's a ten by ten. And you have only three eigenvalues in the repeated. Um, to identify the number of blocks, it's not hard. That's the number of eigenvectors, right? But to identify the size of each block, this is something um, that is, is, is can be a little bit trickier. Okay. I think in your homework, you have to identify all possibilities of what. Four by four matrices with what? With two eigenvalues? And what else? Hmm? Two eigenvectors. And two eigenvectors. So one for each eigenvalue? Oh, single eigenvalue with two eigenvectors. So it means how many blocks are you going to have? Blocks. Two. There's one block for each eigenvalue, eigenvector. Excuse me. There's one block for each eigenvector, <coughs> linear independent eigenvector. There's going to be two blocks that have to fill a four by four matrix. So it could be a size two and a size two, or it could be a size three and a size one. Right? Well, actually, that. The order doesn't matter. Okay, the order doesn't matter. So I wouldn't call it a different. Right? You can you can always reorder the blocks by in that matrix T kind of permitting the 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 the, the, the vectors the vectors and generalized eigenvectors. Okay. So again, 
let's go beyond this with knowing that for large matrices, you know, there's still some work to be done, okay? Okay? Step two. So now, instead of of x prime equals ax, solve y prime equals jy, and of course y of zero should be y zero equals what, t inverse of x zero? So x is ty, that's the change of variables. So we're just kind of making it try to analyze the same the same the systems with in canonical forms. Alright. So if J is diagonal Then what's the solution? Well, the solution is very easy because being diagonal it means all the equations are, are decoupled. So you can you can solve the first y prime one equals lambda one y one and so forth. So this is going to be some constant e to the lambda one t. Another constant is lambda 2t, and so forth, right? Where y of 0 has to equal c1, c2, and so forth. So the constants are actually components of that initial condition. Okay? So, another thing that we can uh, observe is that since J is block diagonal, we can um, decouple, well, we can solve uh, independently the subsystem corresponding to each eigenvalue. What do I mean by that? Well, let's imagine y prime is, you know, 1, 1, 1, 2, 4, 4, and there's a 3 block of 1 for, for eigenvalue 1. There's, you know, there's one block for each. Let me just Okay, so this is time over times y. So think about this. <clears throat> Big system, right? And how do you solve this? Well, if you write all the equations, you can you can kind of couple the first three. Well, the first three will be coupled, right? The fourth one is gonna be just independent of the others. And the fifth and the sixth will also be decoupled. So you can do, I don't know, um, I'm, I'm still going to use y, well, let's use y1 corresponding to lambda 1. So this is going to be 1, 1, 1. This is the Jordan block. y2, this is 2y2. And y3 equals or y4, if you want to call it by the eigenvalue. Well, okay, y3 is 4, 1, 0, 4. y3, okay? So that's what I mean by decoupling, okay? So that's a nice thing about having a Jordan canonical form. You can decouple it. So now you can actually concentrate on, on systems that have only one eigenvalue, or matrices that have only one eigenvalue, okay? So next is solve each 
subsystem like this. So where this is um, the matrix is just just one block. For so you see here, I gave you the example where there were there were only one block for each eigenvalue. But what if there are two blocks for eigenvalue four? Well, you can decouple it, right? For you, for each block, you can actually uh, write a system, solve it, and then put everything together at the end. Okay, so you would solve for y1, for y2, for y3, and then y will be basically there's going to be a three um, three components, then one component, then two components. Yeah? Okay, so so you see, you narrow it down to just one one block. And now, how do we solve? Let's solve this. Okay, how do we solve this? Well. So let's say, um, let's call this M by, uh, doesn't really matter, M by M. So let's start with M equals 2, because that's the first non-trivial case. So this is lambda, lambda, 1, we've done this. What's the solution of this? Well, can somebody remember? So it was one solution was with the eigenvector, and the eigenvector was one zero. Plus C two T times this eigenvalue, right? But inside here there was also the generalized eigenvalue. So um, so let's write it like this. So this was C two T, right? So let me write again. So this is t e to the lambda t plus oops, 1 0 plus e to the lambda t 0 1 right this was generalized eigenvector right so in the end it was c1 e to lambda 1 1 0 plus c2 e to lambda t t and 1 okay and you can actually combine this back into one matrix if you can um, take a look here. E to lambda t here, t e to lambda t, 0, e to lambda t, c1, c2. Let's see, is this right? So it's c1 e to lambda t plus C2 T to the lambda T. Yep, the first component. And the second component is just C2 E to the lambda T. Okay? Alright, this is Y of T. And uh, if Y of 0 is 0, is Y0, then you get that. What do you, what do you get? Well, you see plug in T equals 0, you get 1, 1, 0, 0. So these constants are exactly the the vector of the constants is exactly the initial condition. So you see this y of t is e to the lambda t t e to the lambda t zero e to the lambda t times y naught. Okay. question is how can we do this for 3 by 3 and 4 by 4 and like a block that is high, uh, higher dimensional well <clears throat> here's where this exponential map uh, or the exponent of a matrix comes into the picture so let me 
I mean, we could, I could, I could, well, I could just tell you what the next one is. So for m equals 3, so if I have a system that has lambda, 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 1, 1, and of course, the same initial condition, then the solution is e to the lambda t, t e to the lambda t, t square over 2 e to the lambda t, that's the first row. The second row is 0, e to the lambda t, t to the lambda t, and the third row is 0, 0, e to the lambda t. And you will ask me how did I get that, and so I'll show you that this, uh, this, this concept of an exponential of a map. Okay? And so forth. So what, what, is, what do you see happening here? There's a pattern, right? On the diagonal, it's e to lambda t, just like in the uh, one by one case, right? But then it gets these uh, factors, right? And those factors, I mean, you've seen them if you've solved third order equations, ordinary differential equations, constant coefficients, uh, for which there is only one. Uh, triple uh, root of the characteristic polynomial. That is, lambda has, has multiplicity 3 in this one, right? Then you, you probably have seen that you look for solutions in this fashion, okay? So that's, I mean, um, I'm just pointing out that you might have seen this, and although you probably haven't really solved a lot of third order equations. But that's, um, Okay, so let's let's uh, let's explain this. Um, all right, so let's talk about exponential of a matrix. And I guess I want to um, introduce this some sort of sort of um, by motivation. Take a general system, okay? A is n by n. At the end of the day, given an initial condition, the solution is going to look, is going to be a linear. is going to be linear transformation of this initial condition. So it is going to be something, is going to be a matrix called the exponential of the matrix times x naught. Okay? The whole thing is what is this matrix going to be? And the intuition is from uh, n equals 1 case when x prime equals a x, a is real, then you know what the solution is, x of t is, well, you write it x naught e to the a t, right? That's how you solve for just, just the basic equation. x prime equals a x in one dimension, a is constant, that's the solution, right? So, so it's the same thing here except, of course, we're talking about vectors and matrices, so this is going to be uh, the it's going to be a matrix called the exponential of a. Well, it's not of a, but it's of t a. Okay. And the order is 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 important because this is going to be a matrix, an n by n matrix. And this is going to be, you know, so you cannot multiply the other way around, right? Uh, the order here is not important. T times t is, a, t is a real number, right? It's t is the time times a, so it doesn't matter. It's a t or t a, so. But you can see kind of the analogy here, okay? So what is the 
EXP of a matrix. If B is an N by N matrix. There are several definitions or several, you know, several equivalent definitions. One of them is um, take the an analog of uh, the expansion of the exponential for real, for real numbers. So real numbers uh, is you start with the 1, then you add the exponent, then you add one half the square of of x, right? So let me let me. I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna shadow this with. So this should have been in shady color here. I'm gonna use the same here. To say that exp of a real number is or of a real number is one plus b plus one half b squared plus. 1 over n factorial b to the n plus so forth and again this works for a real b but here we're not dealing with with numbers we're dealing with matrices so let's see does it still make sense though to say raising a, a matrix to a power I mean, you can raise the matrix to any power, square matrix, right? So you can, um, okay, and I'm sorry, this should not be the same n, so I use k here maybe. Okay, so I can raise the matrix, which is n by n, to any power. I can multiply by this constant, and then I can add this. I can create this series, but in series is. What's the series of matrices? Well, you can add term by term, right? So, so you could say is n square series. There are n square series, one for each uh, location, right? The first component of this plus the first component of this by you know, one, 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 and so forth. Right? So, to define this part, this series is. I mean, there's nothing new to do. It's just say it's summation. The convergence is similar. So when we say dot dot dot, what do we mean that the series converges? And then this definition calls the sum of the series to be that exponential one uh, of b. What does it mean a series to converge? Hmm? The limit of what? The exponential b of b equal to the limit of that. Of what? What's it called? <laughs> the series? The sequence. Sequence of? Partial sums. Partial sums. The sequence of partial sums, right? So, well, I mean, just, right? I mean, you first say identity and then you say you add this and then you add this and you add one at a time and you get the sequence right and then if the limit is exists and that's the limit that's the sum of the series right so it's going to be the limit is k goes to infinity well let's call it capital n goes to infinity of i plus b plus one half b squared plus one over n factorial b to the n Okay. So the first question is, how do we know this limit exists? Okay. And there were criteria for series, convergence of series that you learned. One of them was absolute convergence. What was absolute convergence saying? Hmm? The absolute value. So, you know, these terms, just imagine like one, like the... Just imagine the one one entry in the in each of these matrices. Some could be positive, some could be negative, right? So the the 
one of the uh, few criteria for convergence for a series that's positive and negative is first to look at the series of the absolute values. Okay? And uh, look at the series of the absolute values, and if that converges, that means the sum is finite. Okay? And then absolute convergence says, well, the whole series is actually uh, is also convergent. The original series is convergent. So, um, I mean, how do you make this formal? Let's let's just say B is B I J, and we denote B I J of uh, two to be the j, i j component of b squared, okay? b i j 3 is the i j component or entry of b cubed, right? And so forth. So I guess this would be b i j of 1, for instance. Okay. So why is this the series 1 plus b i j plus one half b i j of two i mean that's the for b squared plus you know one over three factorial b i j of three and so forth converges absolutely because well you can actually find a a series to compare this one with and which series is convergent. So what do you need for, for comparison? You need something that's bigger, right? Well, so, okay, what is BIJ of 2? Well, BIJ of 2 is actually a sum. How do you get the IJ component of B squared? You do that matrix multiplication of the i throw of b with the j throw of b, right? So it's going to be summation of b i k b k j, right? k from 1 to n. And basically this, you can bound it, you can say this is less than the sum of the absolute values, right? Right? The absolute value of a sum is, is less than or equal than the sum of the absolute values. That's the triangle inequality. Uh, so this is, well, so how can you make something uh, uh, out of this inequality? Well, let's, let's just call B to be the maximum of B, I, J. So in that original matrix B, just look at the maximum possible absolute value of all the entries. Right? This means that each of this is, is less than that, so this is less than n times b squared. Right? Because each is less than b, and then I have n terms. n times b squared. Okay? bij of 3. Now think about the third, third, I mean the b cubed. B cubed. How do you get b cubed? Well, it's basically B I K B K L B L J, or summation over K and L. It's a double sum of products like this. And again, you do the same thing, and you're going to end up with n squared B cubed, and so forth, right? So what's the summation of the b i j of a k? Well, k I use k many times um, of n, n from one to infinity. Well, I'm sorry, this divided by n n, n factorial. So this is going to be less than or equal than summation n to infinity n. I'm sorry, little n to capital N minus 1, is that right? b to the n over n factorial. Now, is this series convergent or not? 
is this finite or not? But it is finite because right. So you have you also have an expon exponential here, but um, this you can also you can basically see this. This is less than you can write this as one over n n b to the n over n factorial, and this is one over little n is fixed. Little n is the, the size of that metric, so that doesn't change. Summation is over capital N. What's the summation? E to the n b. So this is finite. Okay. Anyway, so that's just saying that that series on each component is convergent to something. Okay? So the limit, you assemble the uh, matrix and biometrics, and you call it to be the exponential. Exponential of a map. And that's the exponential of a map, of a, excuse me, of a, of a matrix. Okay? Now, there are, there are equivalent definitions. Uh, one that I like, but I won't have time to talk about this is, you know, there's another definition for the exponent, for the, um, for e to the x. e to the x is what? One. Using the limits. 1 over 1 plus x over n to the n. Okay? And again, let me use m because I use n for the size of that matrix. But this, is, this doesn't really have a good analog. The one that has a, a better analog is you can write this also as limit as m goes to infinity of 1 minus x over m over minus m. Okay. Would you agree with this? I don't know. Just check it. Just change the signs on both sides. So that, there's another definition which is exponential of a map is the limit of the identity minus 1 over m b to the minus m. So what is this supposed to mean? To the minus m. What is? Oh, well, that's exactly the inverse. The question is, for m large enough, is this matrix invertible? So there's a whole discussion, and it turns out that it is. So this is invertible, so you can take powers of the inverse and you, you can get the same thing, okay? This actually has something very good to say about the Euler's method. It's implicit Euler's method, but let me not talk about that. Um, okay, so once we have this, the next thing which is a, well, the basic theorem, it says that uh, the system Uh, x prime equals ax has, well, with x of 0 is, is x0, zero, has a solution, unique solution, x of t equals exp of ta, x is not. Okay? So there are two things that we have to check that that this function and you see is the exponent of not of a but of t a and t is increasing um, that this function is a solution right and secondly that any solution is of this form okay so this is the general solution and of course the constant ends up being this okay I won't really have time to do it today, but um, how, how would you prove this? Well, one way to prove it is to say, well, let's take the derivative. Okay. And take the derivative using the limit definition. Let's take the t plus h a x naught minus exp of ta 
over h There is a property of the exponential of a, of a matrix which is similar as, as for uh, real numbers. And the proof is in the book. I'll, I'll let you read that. That the exponential of a sum is the product of the exponentials. So it's EXP of TA. Well, and the order doesn't matter. So it's either way. Exponential of HA, EXP of TA x naught minus exp of ta over h. I mean, the order matters, but in this case is the same uh, matrix A with just different constants. So this is exp of uh, excuse me, is the limit I guess I should have kept the order, so exp of of uh, TA and EXP of HA. So it's EXP of TA, C is a common factor, and this is limit H goes to zero of EXP of HA X naught minus identity over H. Okay? Uh, no, I'm sorry, X naught is, X naught is outside. I'm rushing through this, but x naught is outside. So x naught is outside. All right. Well, how do you compute this limit? Well, take go to the definition of this uh, exponential, subtract uh, identity, divide by h, and you'll see that what's left is just a. Okay. Well, so this looks like it's EXP of TA times A times X naught, and it doesn't just quite, what you'd like is you'd like it, this, it's A EXP of TA X naught, right? Because this is A X of T. Who, who allows you to do this last step? The last step is, Again, go back to the definition of the exponential. It's a series of, of powers of A times T, powers of T. When you multiply by a matrix, by matrix A itself, those commute. You can, you can, you know, A with powers of A commute. You can uh, multiply in either order. Right? So you can move it on the other side. Okay? So this combination shows, and again, that property I didn't show you that exponential of a sum is a sum, is a part of exponents, but uh, with that, you can see that that is a solution. Okay. Again, I'll post one to, uh, to show you that is the only solution. But let me just uh, conclude that now I've hopefully convinced you that when you um, compute that, when you compute this thing. Um, and happens that A is <coughs> lambda lambda one one, so it's a block. Okay, if this is a block, what's the ex what's the exponent of T times a Jordan block? Well, it is one 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 zero 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 zero. That's the identity, right? Plus T times J. So the lambda 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 one one. Okay. Plus, what's what's the next term? It's t squared over two times j squared. Okay, so exp of tj is identity plus tj plus t squared over two j squared plus blah blah blah. Right. The funny thing is, if you square this Jordan block. What's going to happen is you're going to have a 1. Well, you're going to have lambda square, lambda square, lambda square. You're going to have lambda, lambda, and 1 here. Okay? And then when you do it, the next time is going to be lambda cubed, lambda cubed, lambda cubed, 
lambda square, lambda square, lambda. Okay? So we're going to have this kind of pattern. So when you, I'll just write what you get in the end is e to the lambda t. So if you look at the first entry is 1 plus t lambda plus t square over 2 lambda square plus t cubed over 3 lambda, lambda cubed. So that's the sum of e to the lambda on the diagonal. Below the diagonal you get 0. And above the diagonal you really get t e to the lambda t, t e to the lambda t. And the last spot here is 1 half t squared to the lambda t. Yeah. So if you don't like this, you just remember this. Um, And just really the last thing is back to a general matrix A that is brought into the canonical form, then you have A is Tj T inverse, right? And if you compute the exponent of matrix A or Ta, little ta, is going to be T exponent of Tj t inverse. So what is the solution going to look like? With any any matrix, what's the solution going to look like? Any matrix A. Well, it's going to be just like this. It's going to be t and t exp of tj t inverse x naught. So there's going to be these two guys here which is going to skew the whole picture, right? T and T inverse. But this guy, this matrix here is going to have always that nice structure, okay? And of course initial condition. So back to this. If I have this structure, let's say I have this structure, okay? What is going to be the exp of tj? Hmm? e to t, e to t, e to t, t e to t, t square over 2 e to t, t e to t. Okay? Here is going to be e to the 2t. And here is going to be e to the 4t, e to the 4t, t e to the 4t. Okay? And then you take this matrix and you multiply by t and t inverse, and you get the solution. Okay. I'm missing one one case. That is of the complex conjugate case. Uh, eigenvalues one it's alpha, beta, or minus beta. Right. This is for repeated roots. Uh, I don't know if that's part of. Uh, it's going to come up in your homework, but if it does, then it's uh, the formula is actually in the book. Okay. It has cosines and sines. Actually, you know what? I'm going to add it uh, on the notes, and you can print the notes. All right? Thank you. So we said Monday. Turn in the homework. Okay. So I'll have the notes here. Uh, I mean, uh, added that last case. And just make sure you print it. Hmm? That we're going to.